grab its arm, and when you grab it by the wrist, it goes into what we call zero G mode. So the robot is using its motors to compensate for its own weight, so it feels when you're moving the arm around, it feels as if you're moving it through free space. So you can say, move over here, click a button, grab this, put it over here, and then let it down. And once you've done that, it can do it over and over and over again without any intervention from you. You've never touched a line of code or a mouse or a keyboard, anything like that. And oh, by the way, it's gonna do it more efficiently than you because what it's thinking about is not the steps. Like a traditional robot, you tell it steps. Go to coordinate zero comma zero comma zero. Okay, I'm there with the hand oriented like this. Now go to one comma two comma three with a theta orientation on the hand that looks like this. I mean, that's what the robot is internalizing. What the robot is internalizing in this case is, is the task. I mean, it's, um, I mean, it's built on behaviors. It's built on these goal-directed computational entities that are focused around an outcome. What are you trying to get me to do? You're trying to get me to put something into a box. That's what it's thinking about. So then it can start to apply some of this uh, intelligence in ways that say, you know, I'm packing the box, but mm, the data would suggest I can pack it in a better way or a different way. Um, and so it, because it's thinking at a, at a more abstract level as opposed to just move from this coordinate to this coordinate, um, it's able to start to leverage these technologies in, in that kind of a way. And that's where I think some of the, um, you know, the, the digital manufacturing, um, we're, we're going to start, start to see that come together.